Monday, happy Monday, happy Monday. Hope you guys are cool. Hope you had a good weekend. Yo, guys, I have flu. So, yeah, excuse the voice and being a little bit nasally. Um, flu got me this weekend. But yeah, we're here, you know. Nevertheless, we're going to do the master class. So, if the energy is a little bit different today, guys, please forgive me. It is the flu. So, yeah, afternoon. Happy Motivational Monday, everyone. Sibu, welcome. Thank you for coming through. Really appreciate you. Um, but to really hi. Um, the lieutenant is here. The lieutenant is here. Um, thank you for coming through. So, yeah, guys, excuse the, excuse the voice, guys. Excuse the voice. Excuse the energy as well. You guys know I'm normally, you know, energetic, making things happen. So, guys, just double tap the screen. Um, hi, Za. Welcome, Za Belinda. So let's tap the screen, guys. Let's get to a thousand likes. And then, yeah, I mean, let's do our thing. Happy Monday, coach. The only coach whose fans won't throw items at. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, um, Edward. Thank you so much. Um, afternoon, Mamaga Shaga. Welcome, 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 welcome. Let's get to a thousand likes, guys, so that we can get to the topic of the day. Guys, as you know, um, everything we discuss in this live and these master classes is how we can become executives because we are not negotiating with the world we want to become executives that's what we're shooting for we are very intentional um about our careers and where we want to get right so guys a couple of things remember grab steak hi thank you for coming through remember guys um go check out the youtube channel career emporium um that's where you will get all of the master classes that that you might have missed master classes happen every day two o'clock so if you missed any of them, um, go to the YouTube channel, go join the WhatsApp group, um, go to kereampoream.co.za, then you can join the <clears throat> the WhatsApp group from there. Um, and then, yeah, uh, you will get links to all of the master classes and blog articles and etc. Um, go on LinkedIn, check Career Emporium, follow um, to get all of the blog articles there. But also there's a Career Emporium um, job alerts um, group so you can join it that's where i post all of the job vacancies and etc okay and then guys on twitter we are there uh on um instagram we're also there faith hi thank you for coming through so yeah guys like i said um i have a bit of flu so please forgive my energy today and then um yeah can i join that group yes Sibu, um join the whatsapp group Join the LinkedIn group as well. Just go to LinkedIn, look for Career Emporium um, Job Alerts, and then you can join the group. I will approve you as soon as you join the group. Okay, so that's on LinkedIn. Guys, we've hit 1,000 likes, so we're going to start with um, today's masterclass. And today's masterclass, guys, I want to take you through the role of an executive and really simplify it for you, right, so that... Um, as you prepare yourself, you understand what kind of role you're going to be occupying uh, when you become an executive. Okay. So there's three big ones. Um, they summarize a whole lot of things when it comes to that. And guys, you must remember, whatever the role is going to be, you need to start practicing those things now, right? So don't wait until you are an executive before you start practicing those things. You need to start teaching yourself these skills, um, you know, how to think, how to behave and change your mindset now, right? So that you can display that in the workplace and then that will buy you the favor of being identified for an executive position. So make sure that you are following me. I see you, Nkosa. I see you, Kitu Medzi. I see you, Nom Zamo. Thank you for following. Um, and let's share the live and call your friends. So the first thing, your first role as an executive in a business is strategy, right? So you want to grow the overall business or the business unit operationally. So that's why it's very important for you guys that in your current job, which is might, might be operationally driven, you need to understand it very well, right? Understand the processes, understand the procedures. One thing that I always encourage people is that you need to start now to learn how to analyze um, the, the processes and systems, right, in your department and see how you can improve them. Start making suggestions in terms of how you can improve them. So let's say a process requires one person to complete the spreadsheet. It requires the second person to email the spreadsheet to another person. That person must give it back and that and whatever the case is, right? So what you can do is that you can suggest that maybe let's not use Excel, let's use ClickUp, right? Or you can also suggest that since this process gets delayed, 
when it comes to this part, right? Maybe we can um, try and shorten the process and then see how we can grow it. So you need to start making those suggestions now. So go to your department, look at your processes and systems and start playing around with different ideas in terms of how you can change them put it in an Excel PowerPoint and then just present it to the management team or to the team leader or whoever, right? So you need to start practicing these things. So maybe once a month or once every two months, look at the processes and systems in your department or your business unit and see how you can change them. Because if you master this now, um, that's going to be a bulk of your job uh, when you become an executive. So start practicing these things now, right? Put yourself out there, right? Volunteer to change a process, Volunteer to review a process. Volunteer to change something in your business unit and your business department. Whether you are at internship level, whether you are at entry level, it does not matter. You need to start practicing now. Okay, so that becomes very critical. The second one is networking. So as a director, one of the things that you do is you network a lot, <clears throat> right? I'm sorry about that. And um, if you notice, you will see that your directors and your executives are never in the office. It's either they are attending a stakeholder meeting that's organized by government or department of something. They are out in conferences. Um, you know, they are out and about. They are playing golf and all of that, right? They are attending major functions. Sanbonani, yes, yes, Fifi Dramatic, thank you for coming through, right? So that's what your directors are doing. They are out. So they are looking to start relationships that could turn into big partnerships, right? So let's say, for example, um, you are in an IT company and then you can see one of your IT directors uh, is out and about, um, you know, speaking to uh, different um, government stakeholders at these big business breakfasts and whatnot, because they are hoping that they can get into a strategic partnership with government, which will allow them to roll out maybe free um, internet in the townships and whatever the case is, right? And then um, that becomes a major deal. So that is going to be very important. So you need to get into the habit of going out to conferences and meeting people. And guys, do it over the weekend as well, right? Because there are things that are happening in your communities, um, you know. So learn to go there and network with people and have those conversations and then see how you can help other people. Hello from Sweden. Hi, Beverly. Welcome. Thank you for coming through, Beverly. Um, you understand what I'm saying? So you need to get into the habit of networking and speaking to other people, right? Um, and see what how you can get into strategic partnerships. So when I'm speaking about networking, guys, I'm not talking about going to an event for the sake of going to an event. The conversations that you get into when you are in those events, right, they are quite critical. That's why I'm always saying to you guys, you need to constantly research what's happening in your industry and understand the industry language so that when you're there, you know, um, your conversation is, is, is at a higher level. You can elevate your thinking, you can elevate your speech, you can elevate your talking. Right. So that is the second thing that basically um, is the role of an executive. The third one is influence. Right. So basically influencing policies so that they can work in your favor. So this is very important. Understand the policies, understand the legislation um, within your industry so that you can see how you can sway it into your favor. So I'll give you an example. If there's a big policy that is changing, uh, changing within the banking industry and you feel like um, you know, they, they, they open it up for comments, right? So normally when a policy or legislation changes, they put it out there for people to comment. I'll give you an example. The employment equity um, policy I saw yesterday on LinkedIn, um, there are some changes that are happening within the, the employment equity policy, and they've opened it up for comments, right? So now all of you guys need to go and submit your comments on that policy, don't say ah, it's the it's the job of a, of my manager or is the job of the big sh uh, shots in the company to actually um give comments on the employment equity policy. You guys at entry level position, right, at junior management position, teach yourself to get into those discussions and give your comments. Go check it out on LinkedIn and then see if there's gonna be some kind of a webinar that's gonna be happening in terms of um. Hi, Bushle. Thank you. Bushle, I saw your YouTube channel. I'm so proud of you. At least you didn't lie to us, Bushle. You did start your YouTube channel, you know. Um, so yeah, Bushle, you can write it in the comments. People can go and subscribe. Guys, go subscribe to Bushle's channel. Uh, she's starting her own thing, um, you know, really, um, you know, pushing herself to the next level. So influencing that policy is extremely important. Very, very important, guys. So go check out the employment equity policy. Go see if there are any webinars that are happening. Submit your comments and speak about how you think, you know, um, what you think in terms of maybe even, um, you know, women in management, uh, women in employment equity structure and whatever the case is. So you always need to make sure 
that you are involved in the policy. So um, what happens with, <laughs> I inspired you to, I'm so glad I inspired you, but I, I, it's more like I bullied you um, to start it, but we'll just use the word inspire, you know, for peace sake. Um, so that's what you guys are going to have to do, right? You're going to have to look at this policy and see how you can use it to the advantage of your the company that you are a director in, right? How can you, how can you influence this policy by giving your comments so that it can actually push you in the right direction right so that's what we want to see yes guys please um give Bushle the congratulations can we please have some fire emojis for Bushle as well uh you know for really starting her thing you know she's really pushing guys this is what happens when you put yourself out in the world in order to achieve success you know so let's give um you know all the fire emojis the congratulations to Bushle and please go to her channel please go and subscribe right so that we can grow her subscribership thank you guys for the fire emojis you guys are not stingy that's what i like about this community right so that's that's the third one right so these are the three things guys when you become an executive director you're gonna have to do and if you execute on these well your span um or your time span as a director is going to be very long it's really going to be very long right so i need you guys to start practicing these things now that's what you need to start doing now so you need to start thinking like an executive you need to start sounding like an executive you need to start walking like an executive and these are the first three things that i'm gonna need you guys to focus on so i hope you guys are going to do it for everybody who's here for the first time um thank you for the rose um everybody who's here for the first time in this group we are called the fetch army okay you can see there's a hashtag the fetch army so what this basically means is that we are a group of people that are fetching promotions we are fetching um, executive positions and we are not scared and we're going to put practical steps in order for us to get there all right so if you go to kerempuram.co.za you'll find a lot of blog articles that i've written uh, you'll find also my story of how i became an executive at age 35 and these are the things that i'm actually sharing with you right in order to get you guys to those executive positions so please go to kerempodem.co.za read the book the blog articles we do master classes every day at two o'clock if you missed any of the master classes go to the career emporium um youtube channel please like the videos and subscribe um while you are there so guys these are the three common things that you're going to be responsible for and guys i need you to get into that mindset all right so you need to surround yourself with a group of people that will allow you guys to play around with being executives, right? So just sit around the table, right? Um, every now and then just sit around the table. There, there, there's Bushe's channel, guys. Um, so you can go there and subscribe. Um, you know, so I mean, surround yourself with a group of people that where you guys can sit down and pretend you are exco, right? And then start thinking about different strategies within your department. That's why, guys, you can't have um you can't have a group of friends at work that are always class clowns guys i mean it's, it's it's nice to be a class clown i understand it right people like you for your personality at work and whatnot but i mean like that does not get you into an executive position i'm not saying you must be uptight and stuck up you understand but what i'm saying is you need those group of friends that you can sit down with and then you guys can say okay guys let's pretend we're exco just book one of the boardrooms right or go sit somewhere during lunch and say guys let's pretend we we were the exco of this company what changes would we bring about when it comes to processes and systems right um you guys let's research some kind of new systems that we can use instead of excel that can make our jobs easier just sit around the table you know and dress up guys you know just do it for a friday and dress up like directors and have fun that's why i'm always saying your career journey is supposed to be fulfilling so you need to do this role playing and have fun you know and make mistakes you know and then laugh at each other you know but you know you are growing together fake it till you make it exactly you need to fake it until you make it because the more you fake it is the more you become it right so you guys must just do that sit around the table have these conversations and say how can we change processes how can we change systems let's pretend we were directors how would we grow this company right um and think about the fact that um i, I remember what i used to do with my with my teams in all of the jobs that i worked for since 2008 when i had my first management position i used to have these friday debates when it comes to policy so i would bring my team together and say okay guys this is the policy. We are a policy heavy industry. There are things that are happening within the policy. What would be your suggestions? This is the draft policy that they've put out, right? How would you guys change it? How would you influence it so that it works for us? 
And then you know what? People would challenge themselves. They would push themselves. I mean, people enjoyed this. And I allowed people to make mistakes, you know. But a lot of them that started that journey with me, guys, today they are sitting in directorship positions. And that's because they started building that. And at that moment, they were not even, they were junior analysts, you know. So that's what I want you guys to do. Just create these groups of people around you. And if you can't find those people, you can find them here in this live. You can find them in the Fetch Army right? The fetch army is here, guys. And those people are already in the mindset of fetching big things. So make friends right here and easily inbox people and say, let's get into a Zoom call and then get five or six people in a Zoom call and say, listen here, let's speak about industry. Let's speak about policy. Let's speak about influence, right? And then also share webinars and say, listen, let's all go attend this webinar so that we can go there and then we can network, etc., right? And whatever the case is, that's what I want you guys to do. I want you guys to build these habits. They have to be habits that you actually do, right? So guys, if you feel like you are gaining a lot of knowledge already, please double tap the screen and see if we can get to 10K likes. I'm not going to force you to tap the screen only if you are saying I'm gaining knowledge from this. You can double tap the screen. It's free to actually do that, right? And then let's see if we can get to 10K likes. But that's what I want you guys to do, right? Beverly is saying let's network, guys. 100%. You guys, I mean, the people in this live are so brilliant. They are so brilliant. It's like you guys are the proper fetch army. You guys are fetching everything because I follow some of you guys on LinkedIn. And I can see you guys are really pushing. You guys are totally, totally pushing. So why not network with each, with each other, right? So Zede Pelinda is asking if anyone is in HR. Let's network. I'm loving this. I'm loving this, guys. Guys, put your industries in the comments. And connect with people, right? Who wants to connect with Belinda, guys? You know, put your industries, guys, there and then see if you, you all can get together. Guys, we are the Fetch Army. We are the next proper ethical leadership. You understand, globally, in corporate, we are going to change leadership in corporate. That's us, the Fetch Army. We are rushing the door. There you go. Mama Shaga is in HR. Is there anybody in marketing? Fifi is looking for people in marketing, right? NCM, I see you are in marketing and advertising. I think you and Fifi should follow each other. And then you guys can just sit and start talking about what policies are there, right, in the marketing sector, right? What is the charter saying? How can we change it, right? The processes and systems. You know, guys can also speak about what China is doing. You guys can speak about what Germany is doing. Thank you so much. Somebody has given the gift boxes, Butle. So, guys, if you want uh, the treasure box, sorry, if you want to grab the treasure box, Butle has put it out there, and then you guys can just grab the coins there. Thank you so much, Butle. So, guys, yes, let's network, right? Um, I believe that to have a vision board about being an executive and a goal is important. Exactly, you know. So, guys, if you want to know how to build your career vision board go to careeremporium.co.za i already have a blog article about that or go to the youtube channel because we did a master class on that right here on tiktok how to build your career vision board right employee relations anybody who's in employee relations guys come on let's connect right let's connect guys and then let's go and network black nine hi thank you for coming through I'm loving this, guys, right? Because this is exactly what we do as directors, guys, right? I still serve in different directorship positions, even though I run my business. But this is what we always do, right? When, whenever we're in the webinar, we would ask people um, on the comment section of the webinar, like, hey, guys, who is in this industry? Hey, I'm in this industry. Listen here. Do you mind connecting? Do you mind doing coffee? Do you mind doing a Zoom, right? Um, Okti, no problem at all. Uh, Okti is here. Kaz is looking for somebody in banking, guys, right? So, guys, start networking and do these things steps sit don't wait for because this is what happens guys the reason why i want you guys to be proactive about it is some of you guys are already sitting with brilliant ideas but some of the things um that you might want to change and influence in the company the issue might that it might be only happening at main core level and ex core level right so you are not given an opportunity to present all of those changes and i'm going to give you two ways around it right in order to start getting your mindset into that the first one is exactly what you guys are doing you want to connect with each other you want to speak about sector you want to speak about industry you want to hold each other accountable Right. Butle does media. Guys, if anybody's in media, you can connect with Butle. Right. And then that's 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 what you guys can do. That's the first start. Right. You guys can do it together. The second one, guys, is I've also put this on the blog. Right. I've put this on the blog as well. Find a process and system that you can change at work. We did a masterclass on this. See what kind of changes you can make. 
take that and put it in a PowerPoint presentation, right? Put it in a nice, beautiful PowerPoint presentation. Then say to your boss or your senior, or your manager, I would like to meet with you because there's something that I would like to present. So you don't wait for somebody to say, hey, guys, we are looking to change processes and systems. Um, who wants to volunteer? No, guys, we are the Fetch Army. Do you guys understand that we are the Fetch Army? We don't play around. Right. So that's what we need to be doing. Sibu wants to connect with Butle. Guys, follow each other and then discuss industry. So we will not wait for people to say that after you found it, put it in a PowerPoint presentation and then say to your boss, is it possible for me to see you and, 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 and maybe share this with you? Because um, I've got certain ideas. Right. And this is going to is, is really going to accelerate your promotion talks once you start doing things like this, because companies are looking for people that are future directors that are thinking like directors right now. Right. So that's what you do. And then um, on the day of the presentation, guys, please dress up, treat it like it's an interview. Dress up, bring your PowerPoint presentation open it up and present it professionally to your boss where you are showing them the systems and processes you need to change. Guys, once you do that, your name really starts making the rounds within the company. You do this once every two months. By the end of the year, you're going to come to me and say, coach, I'm already in promotion talks right now, right? Um, they want to upskill me more. They've identified me for stuff. You want to be earmarked for stuff, but you do not get earmarked for just sitting. You get earmarked for moving. You guys need to move. You need to show initiative. Now, a lot of people are going to say to me, yeah, but coach, why do I, why must I do these extra things? This is not my father's company, right? Um, they're not even going to pay me more for this thing, right? So why should I actually bother myself with all of these things and whatnot, right? Guys, you must remember, going the extra mile is not for the company. Going, for, going the extra mile is for you. It's for you at the end of the day because whatever knowledge you're going to gain by putting yourself out there and learning new skills because that's how you you learn new skills right by challenging yourself by doing things that are outside of your scope that is how you grow and that that is how you become something so if you're going to sit and say yeah but yeah it's for the company and whatever the case is you're going to have problems if the door doesn't open knock someone might open exactly you know what and Beverly, there's so many doors out there that sometimes we forget and we're looking at this one door. Let's say you go for this presentation. You make this presentation and they're telling you, yeah, you know what? You are too young to even be suggesting these things. Or we are not taking suggestions right now. Yes, you're going to be disappointed by the rejection. But sit down and ask yourself, what did you learn in that process? What did you learn in that process? Right? You've increased and you've grown your skills in that process. And let me tell you something. This is good interview content where you are sitting in an interview and they say to us, give us an example of where you've shown initiative. And then you tell this story that without anybody prompting me, without anybody forcing me, without anybody bullying me, me, I said, and I looked at my department and because I wanted to show leadership and help my team to work much more better. This is what I did. Guys, that's an ace. That is an ace in an interview when you share that story, right? So all of these things that you do that are extra, guys, it's not for the company. It's not for extra money. It's not for, you understand what I'm saying? It's to grow your own skills. I did a whole lot of things. I was involved in a whole lot of projects that I was, I was not getting paid for. So in our industry, we used um, the scorecard a lot because we were in the, um, in, the, uh, in the consulting space, right? So we used software a lot and i remember in three of the companies that i worked for when it was time for them to develop new software i actually volunteered to test it out and i came up with ideas of how we can test it out and i actually even went to um, some of my clients and i said can you get involved in helping me test this project can i use you guys as a guinea pig and my bosses would be shocked like how did you even pull this off how did you even pull this off, right? Because it's not something that they prompted me to do. So being involved in all of that, yes, it means I had to give a little bit of extra time. Thank you for everybody who's gifting. And thank you for everybody who's tapping the screen. I really appreciate you guys. Um, Kotlele, Kotlele Lotole, sorry. I'll, I'll call you Kotle. Thank you for saying you love the topic. I really, I really appreciate that. Bushle, thank you for the rose, right? So that's what I used to do. I used to put myself out there. And um, I remember I told you guys this story uh, in one of the lives that people used to laugh at me and be like, you're so stupid. You're doing all of these extra things and nobody's paying you extra money. Now look at you, Tina, we are leaving at four o'clock when you have to stay until five. And whatever the case is, right, I knew what I was doing. Whether I was being recognized by the current company or not, I remember a year down the line, 
when I started mentioning all of these things, guys, my journey from senior manager to um, executive, it accelerated. It moved very quickly. It moved extremely, extremely quickly because I always had good interview content. I had very interesting stories to tell during interviews of how I've shown initiative. Because in an interview, guys, we've, we've, spoke, we've spoken about this before. Don't be boring in an interview. We've had this conversation, right? Don't be boring in an interview. You need some content. You need some fresh stories. Like right? You need to be like Moja Live uh, Channel 157 when you are going for an interview. You need to have stories. You need to have tea. You need to have all of this, right? But that's what you do. You build all of those things. And you need a moment of glory. You need a story of glory. I always say to people, if you don't have a story of glory, and I notice this a lot when I'm doing um, LinkedIn profile reviews. By the way, guys, if you want to do your LinkedIn profile review, go book your one-hour session on kerempuram.co.za where I helped you to set up your um, LinkedIn profile because at the end of the day, it all starts with LinkedIn, right? Um, also, if you want to book your overall career strategy, you feel like I don't know how to get into an executive position, go book for 450 bucks one hour on kerempuram.co.za. We do it via Zoom, right? So one thing, one thing that I notice when I'm doing people's LinkedIn profiles, when we're doing the about section, I always say the first paragraph um, must be your uh, qualifications and your profession. The second paragraph must be um, why you love your sector. The third paragraph must be your moment of glory, right? This is where you flex. I was involved in this newspaper. I was involved in this project and whatnot. A lot of people don't have that third paragraph. They don't have a moment of glory. And whenever I ask them, they say, that's because the company never gave me the opportunity. No, guys, we are the Fetch Army. We don't wait to be given an opportunity to have a moment of glory. We look for opportunities to have our moment of glory. So if there's a project that's happening, put your hand up and say, I want to get involved in this, right? If there's an event happening at work, just look at things and say, I need my moment of glory. Without your moment of glory, I'm telling you, you don't have anything impressive to say in an interview and you you are not learning new skills that are going to get you to become an executive. Nothing, like nothing, right? Um, you're just going to be a hard worker. And then um, like they always say, um, your reward for, the reward for hard work is more work. It's as simple as that. You will get more work. That's what happens, right? Guys, thank you for following. If you're not following me, make sure that you follow so that you can know whenever I go live. I do these career masterclasses every day at 2 o'clock. In this group, guys, we are called the Fetch Army. You can see the hashtag there. And that means we're a group of people that are fetching promotions. We are fetching big things in life. We don't sit. We don't make excuses. We don't say because we've got toxic bosses, then it's time for us to give up and curl up somewhere in a corner with our thumb in our mouth and then just cry and complain about everything. That is not what we do as the Fetch Army, right? As the Fetch Army, we fetch what needs to be fetched. Thank you, Christopher, for the gifts. Right. So, guys, these are the this is a simple in, in, in simple terms. This is the role of an executive. But what I want you guys to remember is that you need to start practicing these things now. You need to start practicing these things now. So you do not wait to be an executive before before you can think like this. You think like this right here, right now. All right. Yo, my bosses don't know what's coming. I'm being equipped. Edward, they don't know what's uh, corporate does not know what's coming. I look at my Fetch Army every day and I sit and I think about you guys and I'm like, corporate does not know what's coming. They have no clue what's coming. There's a special group of people that's called the Fetch Army that's coming and they're going to be the next generation of leadership. That's what this, this, these masterclasses, this live, this community, this crew that is here, all of the troops that are here, that's what we are all about. Corporate is still every day. Right. We are gunning for it. Let's go. You know, uh, Yazoo saying hashtag fetch army. Let's go. You understand. So corporate is still expecting people that just come through because, guys, you need to understand how difficult it is to find executives these days. It's so difficult. There's an army rising up. But I'm telling you, winter is coming. Winter is coming. If you watch Game of Thrones, they'll tell you that winter is coming. Right. So we are coming, guys. So, guys, it's so difficult to find executives these days. It's so tough. It's so hard. Everybody is as bland and as dry as Mary biscuits with peanut butter. Can you, 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 you can imagine how dry that is, right? It's so difficult to find ex-core members. It's so difficult to find. It's like people are not speaking about industry. People are not speaking about, um, you know, operational management and influencing operations and all of that, right? People are not speaking about networking, 
right people are not speaking about influencing policies all of these three things that are here people it's so tough it's so tough to find executives guys and corporate right now we we are at a point where we have to take anybody who comes and just hope for the best we just take anybody who comes and hope for the best. So when I started this platform and I said, I want to grow the Fetch Army, an army that's going to be the next level of exco in corporate. I said, we need to do something extraordinary and something special. So all of you guys, if you follow these guidelines, if you follow everything that's here, I'm telling you right now, you're going to be a special kind of leader at the end of the day. And it's going to be so easy for you guys to get appointed because let me tell I'm telling you right now. Right. You guys are going to be competing with very weak people. I deal with them every day coming through, looking for this, looking for this position, looking for that. Guys, and I sit in these interviews and people are boring, boring in those interviews. Right. So you guys, I'm telling you right now, the opponents that you're going to be facing when it comes to, the, to your interviews, they are weak. You're going to be facing weak people. If you go through all of the master classes. And gain the knowledge that's sitting in the master classes. If you go to kerempore.co.za and read the blog articles, you guys are gonna be a special bunch of people. Nobody's gonna compete with you. Everybody you're gonna bump into, they're going to be weak. Because, guys, I'm telling you right now, when you go for an interview and you go for these top positions, right? You are not competing with the company. So you can't blame the company and say, yeah, the company does not employ us. The reason why you did not get the job is because somebody crushed you in an interview. Right. So don't fight with us as the directors of companies. You are fighting with the person who beat you at the interview. But I'm telling you right now, the caliber of opponents that you guys have that I've been, I've been seeing myself. Yo, guys, weak, weak. They, their interviews today sound exactly like the interviews they had five years ago. Stale information, no new information on changing procedures and systems or making companies work operationally, no new information about policy and how it should change and debating policy during an, a, an interview, right? No depth when it comes to networking. Yeah, I've, I've gone to this uh, webinar, I met two, three people, but no ideas in terms of how they can take those relationships that they've built outside and turn them into strategic things. You understand what I'm saying? It's like it's zero, squat, nothing. So guys, go to YouTube, Kerry Emporium, go listen to the other masterclasses. Guys, you don't need to watch them. You just put your earphones on as you're working and just listen to the previous masterclasses. And make sure you gain that knowledge and go to kerryamporium.co.za and read the blog articles, guys. I'm telling you, you're going to crush the competition. There's uh, People are weak out there, guys. People are weak out there. I want you guys to beat them and rush corporate. So I know we've got a lot of people right who are in entry-level position start now you are spot on coach lack of preparation and knowledge inside i'm telling you zere belinda people are weak 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 you sit in an interview you can't wait for it to end i've done interviews in 15 minutes when they were actually scheduled for an hour because i could see they are not going anywhere okay i'm so grateful for being part of the army um it's crafting me to be a tough leader in my industry thank you e two smiles that's what we want to see that is exactly what we want to see. In my interview, the director kept saying, that is what we want to implement when I was answering. There you go, Edward. Guys, you need to get into a position where a director of a company is sitting with you in an interview and they feel like they are speaking to another director. Because they need relief. They need support, right? A director always needs a good exco around them. And that gives us peace of mind because now we can focus on growing big things. So when you go for an interview, you need to make a director feel like they're speaking to another director. You need to shock them so that they can even say, this person is not even at directorship level. They're not even here. PK, thank you for the roses, right? They are not even here interviewing for a directorship position, but I'm already feeling like this is a person I want to earmark. So even when they employ you, they employ you with a greater plan of saying, this one, we just need to work on them for a year. But year number two, I need this person to come and sit in my exco. So obviously, you need to close your knowledge gap. You need to get some mentorship and whatever the case is. But you need to already reflect that, guys. You need to show signs of being a director right now, right? So I'm going to go through the three points again. We're going to rehash them to make sure that we all fully understand them. So your role as a director, when we simplify it, guys, number one, you're going to have to think and implement strategy. How do I get my LinkedIn reviewed? Beverly, go to kerryemporium.co.za um, and then you will see there's, a, uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a, a button to book your LinkedIn profile um, session, right? So you just click on it. It's $1.99. You can book it online. 
I'm going to get an email, then I'm going to book you in. Shout out, by the way, guys, to everybody who came for the LinkedIn sessions. You guys have been impressive. You've been booking in numbers. Yesterday on Sunday, we had three bookings. I like it when people are booking on a Sunday. Like, seriously, I, I, I really like it because that means you set and you use the weekend to think and actually reflect, right? So that's where you can do, Beverly. You can just go to kerempuram.co.za. If you struggle, um, just inbox me here on, 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 on TikTok and then um, I will ask for your email address and then uh, we'll, we'll take it from there. But it's very easy to book online, right? So let's rehash them. Strategy, guys, in terms of how you grow. Tabiwa, I, Tabs, welcome. Um, you understand, guys? So the first one is strategy. So you need to understand strategy in terms of how you can grow a business unit. So how do you do this? Guys, sit and look at the company that you work for, look at the department that you work for, look at the sector that you work for, and think about all of those things that you are constantly complaining about. And pretend you are a director of the company. How would you fix them? Write it down on a piece of paper, right? Write it down. Just put your thoughts there and say, this is how I would change it. You don't necessarily have to go and present it or whatever the case is. You are just teaching your mind to get into the habit of constantly looking at things and saying, how can I improve them? That's what we do when we're sitting at Exco. Those are the Exco conversations that we are constantly having. Operationally, how can we grow the business? Okay, number two, you need to get into the habit of networking. Guys, please don't come to me and tell me this thing of I'm an introvert, wara 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 fish cake, or my star sign is a Pisces, and as Pisces people we don't like, don't throw the star signs nonsense at me, right? You need to give it a chance. Networking is about building connections that could turn into strategic partnerships, all right? That is very, very important. Right. So you need to be intentional when you're having a conversation with somebody. If you are in a, a, at an event and the conversation with a person is not going anywhere, move on. It's OK. Right. Don't force the conversation. You can see there's no strategic partnership that's going to come out of this. There's nothing that's going to happen here. Just say it's nice to meet you and move on to the next person. That's what networking is. Right. We need to take the risk and dive into in, a swim. You need to swim with the sharks. You just need to get in there. BK, I'm telling you, people throw star signs at me. You have no idea. Oh, Leo's don't do this. Oh, this don't, Libra, don't do that. Please don't. I, I'm, I'm, let's not do that. Right. We are the fetch army. We don't speak the way other people speak. People that are not the fetch army can throw that. Right. So that's what we need to do. When we go to networking events, you need to pick somebody. You need to get straight to the point. I never stayed in a networking event for the full event. I would normally go in, speak to a couple of people. The one that I find that we've got stuff in common and it looks like whatever we're talking about can turn into a strategic partnership. I want to get their details as soon as possible and leave the networking event so that I can do a little bit of more research, stalk them a little bit on LinkedIn to see what they do, how they think, see if they were involved in other publications so that when I put together a proposal for them, it actually makes sense. Or when I invite them for coffee, you understand? So I want to leave an impression. I want to speak to them. I want them to hear me. And then I'm out so that I can work on that strategic partnership. I'm not there to speak to 20 people and collect 20 business cards. That's not networking. Networking is an intentional conversation. All right. The third one, guys, is influence. Guys, please get involved in terms of influencing your, um, your, your, your policy, right? The policy within your industry. Guys, what policies exist within your industry? Do you guys even know the legislation? In your industry how can you change it how can you influence it that's what we do whenever you see policies changes uh, changing within an industry chances are directors of large organizations have gone there and said we need to change some stuff please post some of the network events i want to attend please august leo um i'll see i'll see i never thought about that but let me think about it to see um what kind of network ne networking events are there or maybe webinars that are there right because i think you guys are all in different industries so it might be difficult for me to actually suggest but let me see i'll speak to the moderators i'll speak to batobile and nana lee and um okti and then we'll just see how we can come up with something are we gonna use our linkedin um hey 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 noma thank you for coming through Right. Are we going to be using our, our LinkedIn group maybe for that? Or do we start a new? You understand Africa and Daba, if you're in construction, exactly. Africa and Daba is a great one for people that are in um, the, the, the construction, built environment and etc. I've actually spoken at the Africa in Daba. Um, Beverly, I did search Centen Convention Center. OK, then no, my saying let's search Centen Convention Center. Right. Because 100 um, percent. I, I mean, I, I spoke at um, the manufacturing in Daba is a very nice one. 
I, I was a regular panelist there. And then I also did um, ran a lot of uh, moderated a lot of panel discussions, um, uh, smart procurement, uh, CHRO. Um, I'll, 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 I'll compile them. I'll compile them. I think I'll speak to Batubile, um, Norma and Nanali and all of the moderators, right? And then we'll see how we can come up with it. But guys, networking is very important. But guys, also, please do me a favor. Today, your homework is to search policies and regulations that are in your sector. Go read them and tell them if you think they work. Right? That's what an influencer does. You're going to, you're going to, not an influencer as in like Instagram influencer, right? We're talking about policy now, right? That's what you do. You need to go and look at those policies and regulations and say, do they work for our industry? Do they work for our people, right? Do they work for our country, right? Do they work to prevent corruption and whatever the case is? Start thinking like that. Guys, these are nice exercises that you do. You know, I call it bungee jumping. That's what I call it. I'm like, I feel like bungee jumping today. You know, what kind of what kind of things can I look at and pretend that I'm this top dog and whatnot, right? And then see how I can change it. You need to you need to pretend like you you're you're a, you're a captain of an industry. That's what you need to do. It's bungee jumping. Thank you so much, Patobile. Right? It's bungee jumping, guys. You just throw yourself in there. So that's that's that's. I, I think you should turn it into a hobby. That's what I would say. It it. It, it, it actually would be even nicer if you can take your policy analysis, right, and then turn it into an article. Try to write it out and say, these are my opinions. You know what? Maybe it could be, once you've polished it, it could be a very good uh, LinkedIn one that can make you go viral on LinkedIn. Guys, you're going to be concerned about going viral on TikTok and going vi viral on Instagram because now you get this pressure, right? You want to go viral on Instagram, you get this pressure of now having to wear a bikini and knowing it's not your personality, right? That, that lob viral lobo, it's, it, it, it's irrelevant, right? Try to go viral on LinkedIn. That's what you need to do. Viral only. New Leaf technology. If you want more information about e-learning in Daba, go to... Okay, New Leaf. Um, it's so funny, Sibu. Uh, we are about to sign a partnership with New Leaf, um, actually, for one of the projects that I'm doing with the mines. So, yes, New Leaf, I like them. I like them. Uh, I want to use their e-learning platform to teach my small businesses um, in one of the contracts that I have. Um, accounting. You work there. L look at this. I think Sibu and I might meet very soon. Sibu, I think we might meet very soon. We've been speaking to your people. We definitely have speed speaking to people. Network is dribbling me and I'm clutch. Um, Okti, maybe I should do a whole thing about networking, right? Who do we ask for policies? Which department can we ask? Beverly, go on to Google and then just Google a policy in your industry. It's going to take you to an appropriate government website. Sometimes it's going to take you to an industry body. And then they normally have them in, on, in PDF format. Download those policies and start reading them, right? Download those legislations. So mostly they will come as a government gazette or they will come, uh, you know, as a summary that was written by some lawyer or some paper or something. But somebody out there will give you um, what kind of policies. But government websites should have them. Um, industry bodies should have them. So if you're in the financial services sector, you will get them at FICE, uh, for example, right? So there's a bunch of them. There's a bunch of them. Download those policies, guys. You can get them for free. You don't even need to wait to ask anybody. It's like everything is on the public domain. It's public information because everybody needs to understand the acts and the policies that affect the industry. Go read it. See how you can challenge it. My rise on LinkedIn, guys, my rise on LinkedIn, I'm telling you right now, was challenging policies. There was a point where it's, it was the only thing that I'm doing. Actually, go check my, 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 my um, profile on LinkedIn as well. You will see it says I provide policy analysis because that was my rise on LinkedIn. One thing that just propelled me to become an executive at 35 was and because what that did is the more I challenged policies is the more TV wanted me, is the more newspapers wanted me, is the more radio wanted me. And then because of that, I really, it, it, industry could not ignore me. I, I had established myself as, an, as a captain of the industry. So everybody wanted me and they wanted me. They knew I wouldn't take anything less than a an executive position. I mean, guys, come on. I'm, I'm on TV. I'm on radio. I'm writing for financial mail. You understand what I'm saying? And then they, they're the ones that picked me. I never called them and said, can I write for you? They came to me and they said, you are the boss when it comes to this. So we want you. I mean, come on, guys. You know, I'm not going to take anything less than an executive position. Once I've established myself as a captain of an industry, I want you guys to become captains of the industry. You will have content for days. If you can analyze policy, you are going to have content 
for days guys you know so yes guys um that's what i want you guys to do let me know if you have any questions for me um you know you can type it in the comments and like i said guys i'm sorry if the energy was up today i'm recovering from flu um you know um i think i'm gonna have flu for the next two three days so if the voice sounds funny and the energy is funny guys it's because i have flu right um but i've been taking care of myself drinking some corenza c so guys let me know if you have any questions networking is a big one Networking is a very, 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 very big one. I, I, I know that for sure. Thank you, Batobile. I really appreciate you coming through with the gifts today. I really, 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 really appreciate you, Batobile. You know, so networking is the big one from what I'm seeing, guys. Guys, networking is easy. Networking is easy. But let me know, um, Okti. Let me know what you find the most difficult. Is it greeting people? um good get well coach i could tell i could write yeah fifi thank you so much thank you so 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 much you know this is not my my normal everyday um energy it's because i do have flu but you know what for my for my fetch army squad i will show up flu or not because listen whether we're sick or not we still need to fetch right so for the fetch army squad i will always be here 24 7 guys i will be even here even if i was in the hospital after a car accident right because we need to fetch guys i see quiz card there's no time to sit around you know we need to do what we need to do so yeah networking let me know what your challenges are guys when it comes to networking because i know it's a big thing is it is it greeting people um is it do you have anxiety social anxiety maybe around people does your does your battery drain fast you know um just 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 tell me what's up you know thank you for showing up for us we appreciate your time you really make a difference ah fifi you are so sweet you are so sweet guys this is effortless for me if you trust me that's I, I i really believe in you guys and i believe that you know um us working together as the fetch army i really believe we're gonna achieve something big i i swear to you i see the vision of the next generation of brilliant executives you know so yeah uh do you offer public speaking sessions yes fifi i do so as part of your career development if you book your normal career um professional career coaching you can tell me that you want public speaking to be part of it and then we can definitely speak about how you can do public speaking you know i'm actually one of i was one of the best public speaker when it comes to my sector right um that's why they wanted me to moderate panel discussions Every time there's an um, event at my sector, it would be rare if Smoo is not listed as one of the speakers there. It would be very, very rare. I would have to be extremely busy or extremely tired, right, or or something. But yeah, we do that as well. Starting the conversation for me and public speaking. Mama Ashaka, so let's do this, right? Um, when you meet people at a conference and you want to have a conversation with them, I think the problem is how you look at them and the problem also is how you look at yourself, Right? how you walk in there and how you show up there that becomes very critical so you need to constantly tell yourself that i am showing up as a knowledgeable person with a lot of information that i'm going to share with people that's that's it's it's a mindset thing it's a mindset thing how am i going to show up so you do not show up i used to prepare a lot for my for for my networking events until it became a habit i used to prepare a lot and say smoo you're not showing up there as a small guy in the industry and whatnot you are showing up there as usbuda right that's how you are showing up there you are a guy with knowledge you are a guy who understands policy you are a guy who can win every debate when it comes to your sector that's how i'm showing up guys you must remember confidence is knowledge you can never be confident if you don't have knowledge. I'll give you a simple example. If you don't watch soccer and then you're sitting with a group of people that are talking about soccer, your confidence becomes very low. Very, very, very low, right? Um, but if you are a soccer watcher and you know how to analyze soccer, when you are in a conversation with soccer people, what happens? Your confidence is high. It's up. So some of you guys doubt the information and the knowledge that you have. And that's why you bomb out when it comes to um, networking sessions. That's why, guys, you need to constantly be reviewing industry policies, industry current affairs, what is the latest, what is happening, right? Um, networking goes much better when you have industry knowledge. Exactly. Edward, it's so funny. Before I even read your comment, we just said the same thing. We just said the same thing. There's a little background on the people you'd like to connect with. Yes, it does. Norma, that's why I'm always stalking people on LinkedIn. Whenever they're telling me these are the speakers for a particular event, 
oh, thank you so much, uh, Z.A. Belinda, thank you so much, right? So whenever they're telling me this is the event that I'm attending and these are the speakers, Norma, I'm already on LinkedIn, stalking people like crazy. I'm already on LinkedIn. I am stalking everyone. So that when I get there, it makes it even much more personal. So instead of speaking about industry talk, I can speak about industry talk relevant to that person. Guys, that's why I'm saying everything starts with LinkedIn. That's why I say to you guys, before you come to me for anything else, right? I would like to do your career strategy and your career vision board and your career mapping. But before you book anything, book your LinkedIn session first. Let's start at LinkedIn session first. Go book at 199 kerempodem.co.za because that is where everything happens. This is where you connect with people, you connect with leaders. I mean, that is the easiest way of networking as well because you can network through inboxes, you can network through comments and whatnot. By the time you're saying to this person, let's meet outside LinkedIn, you now have confidence of who they are. You are no longer nervous, right? It's like dating. I always say, guys, um, this whole career growth thing is like um jolo. It's one and the same thing. If you've been speaking to a person on WhatsApp or on Facebook or on Tinder for a very long time, and then you guys have got gotten to know each other there, when you bump into each other at events and whatnot, the conversation becomes much more seamless. So you have to treat it um jolo like. It's it's the exact same thing. So before you start anything, come for your LinkedIn session. Let's sort out your LinkedIn so that now you can start networking. You can start checking out people. Because let me tell you what happens. You guys want to stalk people on LinkedIn, right? And check them with profiles that look like I'm a catfish. So already you're going to get blocked. Because I'm asking myself, why is this person who has scammer vibes checking my profile? And they've checked it for, I mean, like every, every day. LinkedIn tells me this person viewed your profile. This person viewed your profile. What are you trying to do? What are you trying to do? Hmm? What are you trying to make a do? Why are you stalking me? You don't have a profile picture or your profile picture is blurry. You don't have a cover image. Your profile is half complete. Why are you checking me out? Are you looking for my email address so that you can send me phishing emails and whatnot? I will block you immediately. I will block you immediately. I don't know what you're trying to make a do here. <laughs> yeah, but I can't. I can't, guys, you know. So go check Batobile's LinkedIn profile, for example. That's what the, the one that I always make an example of. I mean, if Batobile views my profile and I look at her profile and it's a real person, you know, I become interested, like, okay, fine. Um, You know, I work with small businesses. She's in the built environment space and I'm looking at the about section. Hmm, let me find out what it is that she's actually looking for. Then I can say, hey, Batobile, I can see you check my profile. You know, I just wanted to check if you want to connect or whatnot. Or when she sends me a connection request, it's easier for me to accept it. But I'm telling you guys, a, a, a bad LinkedIn profile can make things go south for you very quickly. You go, you're getting denied opportunities from the beginning. Even when recruitment companies are trying to headhunt people and they're looking for people, it's like they just scroll past your, your LinkedIn profile. But your LinkedIn profile, it does not really reflect truly who you are. Like if your LinkedIn profile was fine, you don't know how, you don't know how, how much people would like you. You have no idea. But you guys are sitting with this... You're sitting with this wealth of knowledge. You guys are superstars. You guys are rock stars. But the only person who knows that you are a rock star are the people that sit next to your desk. The rest of the world wishes they knew you. It's like there's somebody who's looking for you, but they don't know if it's you because your LinkedIn is actually not sorted out. So if there's one thing you want to do, if you get on kerempodem.co.za, the first thing you want to do, obviously, read the blog, join the WhatsApp group on kerempodem.co.za. But the next thing you want to do, if you're going to book a session, do not book the professional one first. Book the LinkedIn one first for $1.99. I'm telling you, start there. Then you can book the other ones afterwards. So everybody who's booked the LinkedIn one are now booking the professional one because it's easier for us to actually speak about that. I was headhunted by New Leaf Tech on Facebook. There you go. You see, guys, you need to put yourself in a position where you can be found and you can be headhunted. You understand? You can't hunt something that does not exist. You can't hunt something that you have no clue where you're going to find it. So that's why it's important, guys, that your LinkedIn session must be the first one. Right? Guys, let's double tap the screen. We're close to 25K likes. If you feel like you're getting knowledge, let's double tap to 25K likes. Um, you know, and that's how I got an opportunity. Exactly. Cebu, you know, exactly. So, yes, guys, let's double tap. We're about to close the live. Don't go. Um, everybody who knows how we do in this live will tell you how we normally close these lives. Okay, guys, we are a special bunch of people. Top notch nine to fivers that are I fetch army that are trying to fetch major things. That is us. 
That is us, guys. So all of those people that are sitting in the kitchen and are gossiping in the kitchen, guys, stay away from them. The Fetch Army does not play there. Buy that coffee machine. We don't play there. There you go. Um, Norma has started the, the train, guys. So that's what we do when we close the live, guys. We start the train. Push, put hashtag Fetch Army in the comments. And when you put hashtag fetch army in the comments, Sibu is also joined the train. But Toby, let's join the train, right? That means you are signing a contract with yourself to say all of those things that are on the screen. I'm committing to them, right? So let's put the hashtag fetch army. There you go in the comments. I'm going to give you guys shout outs as we tap into 25K. And then we're putting hashtag fetch army in the comments, right? But Toby, Lem, I appreciate you so, 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 so much. Thank you for always coming through. Thank you for always moderating. I really appreciate you. Christopher. Loyal supporter, man. I see you. Christopher, I'm gonna make you moderator as well. Um, I think you 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 definitely one of the captains sharing the live and tapping the screen and gifting. I really appreciate you. Faith, I really appreciate you. Faith is one of my favorite people also here on LinkedIn or uh, on TikTok, <laughs> LinkedIn. You know, um Z A Belinda, thank you so much for gifting. Thank you so much for coming through. Edward, thank you for constantly engaging. Sibu, I see you. Thank you for constantly being there. Mr. Gift. Thank you so much for coming through here and on the other lives that I'm um, a guest on. Mr. Gift is always there. I see you, my boy. Uh, Beverly, thank you for coming through. Really appreciate your presence. You know, welcome to the Fetch Army. Pruberry, I see you, my friend. Um, Precious, I see you. Fifi, dramatic. The drama, uh, the Kim Kardashian of the Fetch Army. I see you there, Fifi. Um, TL, I see you. Sama, I see you. Uh, Dalsi, I see you. Namsa, I see you. Kotle, I see you. Tiny Sitole, I see you. Yazu, I see you. Mr. Unchained, thank you for always coming through. I see you. Tlemi, I see you. Mama Gashaga, I really appreciate you. Uh, you are now fully, fully fledged into the squad. Purple B, I see you. T-Man, I see you. Noma, I see you. Uh, Kumbulekaya, uh, thanks for coming back home. Okti, I see you. Captain, I really, really, really appreciate you. Cheryl, I see you. Zianda, I see you. Chwene, I see you. Sbonga, I see you. Lebza, I see you. Uh, Miss TM, I see you. Uh, Itu Smiles, I see you. I see you. Um, you proper fetch army as well. BK, I see you. Thank you for coming through and engaging. I appreciate you. Boyd, I see you. Mkala M, I see you. Sibonil, I see you. Kabo, I see you. User 50, I see you. Black 9, I see you. Sylvie, I see you. User 1148, I see you. Dineo, hey, Dineo used to be user something. Now we know Dineo's name. Dineo, welcome to the fetch army. I see you. Thank you for changing your name. Semi T, I see you. Matungwa, I see you. Nolutando Mavundra, I see you. Guys, thank you all for coming through. I see you all. Go to the YouTube channel. Please like and subscribe while you are there. Go to LinkedIn. Join the Career Emporium groups and follow the page. Um, Twitter, go check it out. Instagram, go check it out. CareerEmporium.co.za. Go book your session. Guys, I've got a refer and end program. Bring clients Get paid 100 bucks, make yourself some extra money, and let's push. Um, yes, thank you so much, Norma. I see you all, guys. And always remember, you guys are the Fetch Army. Sharp, sharp, guys. See you tomorrow, 2 o'clock.